next we saw that uh, there are some good reasons uh, that we can praise God and the psalmist lists some of them in Psalm 65 and we looked at uh, uh, two of them uh, somewhat in a full manner but the third one we just started and then we had to uh, cut it off uh, because we had the Holy Communion. So uh, today we will continue with that theme, praise God. I hope you remember this quote uh, from C.H. Spurgeon. Whenever we have to pra praise God, what do we do? We simply say what he is. And I want to remember that in my life. I don't have to look for things to praise God for. All I need to do is to know who he is and, and then speak about who he is. And, and then that becomes praise uh, to the Lord. We simply say what he is. You are this and you are that. The, pra the praises of God are simply the facts about himself. Praise God. It's not easy to, to remember. And uh, it, when we drive, we can praise God. When we are at work, we can praise God. When we are at home, we can praise God. When you are cooking, you can praise God. You are washing your car, you can praise God. There is no time or no place out of limit for us to praise God. And uh, those who praise God are really, really rejoicing in the Lord. In every situation, when we learn to praise God, we have uh, an attitude that is uh, um, pleasant and that, that invites people to know more about Jesus. They will ask you, what is the secret for your joy? What, what, what makes you to be content in life? Especially when you face trials in life with a joyful spirit, uh, that is an added incentive for other people. to. What, what is the secret of your joy? So it matters a lot as to how we live our life. And we, we need to live a praise-giving uh, life um, as, much as, as much as possible as uh, everywhere as possible. So praising God is simply simply knowing who he is and declaring it, not only to yourself, but also to others. Praise God. There was a precious old lady uh, who was known for her faith in the Lord. And um, he didn't, she did not mind sharing it and telling it uh, to other people. So she will wake up every morning comes to goes to her porch and uh, and uh, and say this uh, she'll say praise the lord every morning she will do that just thanking god for who he is and there was an atheist who lived next door to her after hearing it for a while he got fed up with it and um, so um, he came to her and said look lady there is no god there is no point in praising a god which which is not so he went back after scolding her for disturbing his peace. And, uh, and then after a while, uh, uh, hard times came upon this lady and, uh, and she was running short on cash. So one day she was in the porch and she began to pray to the Lord out loud and said, Lord, I need food. Please, please, Lord, send some food. This atheist neighbor was hearing it from his home and he thought he would teach her a lesson. And uh, so, uh, after, after she had prayed, she went into the house and uh, closed the door. The next morning, she comes to the porch and sees bags of grocery uh, on, the, on the porch. And she was one, amazed, amazed that her prayer has been answered. And so she began to shout and praise God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer and giving me the food that I needed. Oh, this man jumped up from behind her and said, see, I told you there is no God. It is I who put the grocery on your, on your porch just to teach you a lesson. And then she said, oh, praise God. He not only gave me food, but he made the devil to pay for it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God. So praising God is a joyful thing. We can praise God and we can, I told you the other day, praising God is a mighty weapon against the enemy. Praising God is a mighty weapon against the enemy. Praising God will drive away our fear. Praising God will, you know, bring us peace into our life. So there is a lot of blessings and benefits when we begin to praise God. But sad to say that most of us either 
uh, when I say most of us, most of the Christians, I don't know if it is that they don't know or they don't want to uh, really praise God. They, we don't live a praise uh, uh, attitude of praise life, and, and we need to change that. We need to change that. I was wondering about uh, that, that today and uh, maybe asking to the, the worship team to stay over a little bit uh, so we can start praising God. Just, just open our mouth and begin to praise God for a while, you know. And we need to practice, you know, how we can do that. We've been silent too long, dear brothers and sisters. We need to let the world know. We need to let the church know that we love God. And we serve a God who is mighty and whom we can praise with all our heart. Amen. So, uh, you know, I have heard people going to um, schools to learn to prophesy or learn to heal the people and, and learn most of those things. Uh, I, I have some problem with some of them, but at least we can go to school to learn to praise God. Learn to praise God. Praise God. As far as prophecy is concerned, I think it is a gift of God. He blesses people with that gift, those who will seek him and pray and desire the gift of God. And, and, and for other things, you know, it is the, it is the mercy of God. In the, in the 12th chapter of the Corinthians, we have 1 Corinthians, we read, it is the Holy Spirit who divides gifts to the people. So, but, but when it comes to praise, it is, it is for us to praise him. He has given us everything we need to praise the Lord. So um, uh, please remember this. Praising God is nothing more than telling who God is. Praise God. It is like a wife telling uh, her husband, you are such a wonderful husband to me. Amen? Now you can do it right now. Turn to her, turn to him and say that, you know. And, 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 and you, can, you can see, uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to do that, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what we was, well, he knows that. <laughs> and so, same thing with the husband. You, you know, it's, it's hard to do it. But there are some people uh, that I've seen, it is so easy for them to do it. You know, they just lavish praise on one another, and, and that builds people up, you know. And... Um, Praise is one way to make people feel a whole lot better about themselves. Those who you work in a company, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment, when your supervisor comes to you and says, you know, you've done a good job, I mean, that, that's something that builds you up. It is a good thing to praise, praise God and, and also praise people that we know. When they do a good job, we need to tell them they have done a good job. Praise God. But many of them are... Backward, but I do think that we need to take time to practice praising God, because we've been silent for so long. We are in that in that habit, you know. And and of all the places, church is the best place to praise God. And and I encourage you to start speaking the praises of God. Praise God. So would you stand with me as we read the Word of God, and uh, in reverence to the Word of God, we need to revere the Word of God, because. Because it is given by the Lord. We read it last time, but it is worth reading it another time. So let us read it together. Read it as it is God's word, not some novel or something that you, you know, read it with, the, with your heart in it. Okay? Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. And to you the vow shall be performed. O oh, you hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man who chooses and calls to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. And we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of all the far off seas, who established the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power, you who still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples, they also who dwell in the farthest parts are afraid of your signs, 
you make the outgoings of the morning and evening rejoice. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the ear with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. They draw upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. Amen. The psalm concludes with a very, very happy note, doesn't it? Very happy note. And that is the, 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 the lot of those who praise God. There is a happy ending uh, to those who praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for again having the opportunity to read this wonderful psalm, uh, Psalm 65. Father, here we are told to praise you for various reasons. And, and we want to look at it, O oh Father. Not just to increase our knowledge, dear Lord, but that we may practice it in our daily living. God, make us a people who are willing to praise you, glad to praise you, and given to praising you. Father, every member of the Bread of Life Church, we pray that we'll be given to the, to the habit of praising and glorifying God. Because, O oh God, you are worthy of all the praise that we can give you. So, Lord, it is our desire, our intent to praise you. Lord, make BLC a praising church. Make BLC a church that will ring out the praises of God. When the people of God come here, praise will arise. And, and Father, because we know God dwells in the praises of his people. So, Father, help us to praise you. And today, Lord, we pray for the congregation, for their physical needs, for their spiritual needs. We pray for those who are traveling. We pray for those who will be traveling, all these dear ones. Father, we pray you will keep them in your care and give them a safe trip. Father, we pray for those who are needing jobs and other things in their life. We pray you will bless them, Lord. We thank you for those who are visiting with us today. We bless them in Jesus' name. And we give you all the glory and praise. Father, may thy word do its work in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I am so glad to see uh, uh, Jerry back here with us. Uh, he is uh, uh, working away from, from us, but he comes occasionally to be with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for uh, being here. And I also see that we have a family visiting from uh, Rochester. We want to thank you. And they are uh, uh, related to Varma and Mitra. Who is friends? Oh, friends. Okay. More than relation. Amen. Praise God. They are their friends. We thank you for visiting. And may the Lord bless you. May the word of God enrich you today and build you up in him. Praise God. So here we have this wonderful psalm, and we will take a moment to look at it. Praise God. So we, we, we went through these slides, so I will just go through very fast. Our God is to be praised. We must praise him. We must praise him. We, we should not be uh, a nominal church. We should be a church that are happy and glad in the Lord. We, you know, I remember that song. I just came to praise the Lord. Any of you know that song? Huh? I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to bless His holy name. That's why we came for. We came to praise Him. Praise God. And uh, I think the ushers need to do something every Sunday now to remind the people that you came to praise God. Amen. That's a new. <laughs> praise God. You know, when they greet them, you know, you came to praise God. You came to praise God. Maybe give a card to them. 
you came to praise God. Our God is to be praised. We must praise him. There is no two ways about it. I don't know what keeps you from praise, praising God. We must praise our God. Praise God. Psalm 65 gives us several good reasons to praise God. We will look at them briefly. Let us consider those reasons and commit ourselves to praising God. Praise God. My brother Shepherd, I am so glad to see you in the front seat. You are in the right place, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. And as he said yesterday, of the blessings and the benefits of being seated in the front seat. Praise God. But he had one problem. And that is easy to be fixed. <laughs> we, can, we can easily fix that. You can sit by me. All right? <laughs> Praise God. So, so, again, my invitation stands for all the members, all the members of the church. If you come early, move to the front. All right? Move to the front. I, I said that before I went to India. Maybe you forgot it, but I didn't forget it. So... <laughs> So I encourage you to move up to the front. If there is an empty seat uh, in the front, but I don't want you to have a fight between you and your wife either. So if there is disagreement, sit wherever you want to sit. <laughs> but if, you, you, you pray about it between the both of you and say that, uh, you know, let us, let us be an example. Let us be an example. Uh, move up to the front and... Uh, you know, uh, look at these front seats are empty. And uh, there are blessings and benefits when you... I mean, that was a good point, Ajay. You know, you can block out everything. I mean, you don't see anything that's happening behind you. You can concentrate on what's going on. So please, all the members, all the members, if you can, move to the front when you come, if there is some seat that you can sit together. Praise God. Praising God is a great defense against the attacks of the enemy. Are you being attacked by an enemy? I said, so, Pastor, I, I am okay. Nobody is attacking me. But the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh or blood, right? But we have an enemy, power of darkness, power in the high places. So we have an enemy attacking. The Bible says that there is an enemy roaring like a, like a lion. He's never lazy. He is ready to attack you at the moment of your weakness. He's always looking for that opportunity to cause you to stumble. So, so prayer, is, uh, praise, prayer is to praise, is a good defense against, uh, against the enemy. Praise God. Praising God is a way to victory. We saw this scripture last week in Second uh, uh, Chronicles 20, 22, I believe it is. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And they were defeated. Now the armies of Moab and Ammonite and the Mount Seir people were formidable. It was too much for Jehoshaphat to face them. And so Jehoshaphat comes to God in prayer and, and, and I believe God has given him wisdom to do this thing. And he ordered the singers and the praisers to go in front of the, of the army. Praise God. And let them rejoice in the Lord. Let them praise, praise God even in the face of a strong enemy coming against them. I'm sure the enemy's army thought this must be crazy people. Here they come to fight with us, singing and praising God. But you see, when they did that, God was pleased with them. They did not let the, 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 the enemy to, to retreat and, and to be defeated. And they praised God in that situation. I remember how Paul and Silas praised God in a, in a cell, in a jail cell. When they were thrown after being beaten and, and bruised. And, but they began to praise and thank God in that prison. So praising God is a mighty weapon against the enemy's attack. Praise God. So let us learn to praise God. Give praise, you know, strong praise from our heart. And, and we can see the enemy just, uh, just moving out. 
He will move his tent from our neighborhood and he will move away because we have, uh, we have this God that we serve. When we praise him, the enemy will flee. Praise God. God arises and the enemies are scattered. Praise God. I believe when we praise God, he will arise. He will arise. So let us be a praising people, praising people every time we get the opportunity. I mean, not as a cliche, but from the heart. Have that heart to praise the Lord. Okay, so we saw that uh, we need to praise God because God hears prayers. What a wonderful thought that is. Uh, God hears our prayers. I was, uh, I was meditating on a scripture the other day in Psalm 32. In Psalm 32, in verse 6, uh, David is saying here, For this shall everyone that is godly pray to you. For this, everyone shall pray to you. In a time when you may be found. Praise God. You know, David felt like something, ha David, something happened in his life, and he experienced the mercy of God, and he experienced that God had heard his prayer. In verse number 5, we read, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. God, you, when I confessed my sin to you, when I offered that prayer of confession to you, you forgave my sin. And I know that you heard my prayer. So in verse 6 days, for this same cause, for this same thing, because God hears prayer, for this same thing, everyone that is godly will pray to you. Hallelujah. So, so we have this confidence that God hears prayers. And we have the reason to praise God. Hallelujah. I encourage you to be praying people. Praying people. I know I am repeating some of this. But, you know, prayer and praise, and it's, 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 you cannot separate them. We cannot separate praise. Because when Paul told the Philippian believers, do not be worried about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with, with thanksgiving, with praising, with thanksgiving, tell it to the Lord. So we cannot separate this prayer and praise. And, and um, so, so God hears my prayer. He hears your prayer. You may be saying that, well, I have been having problems. I have been praying, but God is not hearing. Well, there may be reasons for that. There may be reasons. You may not be ready for God to answer that prayer. You know, when people come to me and say, Pastor, please pray for me for a job. You know, I want to ask them the question, now what are you going to do with that job? What is the purpose behind you needing a job? Of course, we all know what the purpose is for a job. We need to have a livelihood, right? We need to, we need to make, an, make a living. But that's good. My, my, my question is, how would you honor God with that job? How would you honor God with that job? See, we are God's children. Somebody, uh, Reggie said yesterday, you know, we may be from Andhra, from Kerala, from Tamil Nadu, from North India, South, wherever it may be, but that's secondary. We are Christians first. We are God's children first. So in every situation, we need to give this thought, what am I going to do with it? When God blesses me with a job, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to spend it all on myself? Am I going to honor God with what he is blessing me with? Am I going to be selfish? To look at just me and my need and forget about what God's word is commanding me to do. So as God's children, we need to be thinking about our purpose of life. What, what are we going to bring to God out of every small and big blessing that God will bring us? Even, my friends, even the blessing of a child. You need to ask the question, how am I going to bless the Lord with my child? 
How am I going to, you know, you remember Hannah. And she come, he come, brings back that only child at that point, the only child that God gave her. She brings him back to the temple and presents him to the Lord. And she says, for this child I prayed, and God gave me this child, so I'm going to give it back to him. I think every believer needs to ask a question for every blessing that God will bless us with. Number one, of course, God wants you to, you know, make a living. He, you, he, he wants you to live in a home or, a, or wherever it might be, have food and clothes and all the things in life that we need. But we cannot forget the commands of God. We need to be obedient to the command. So in every blessing God blesses me with, I need to bless the Lord in back. I need to bless the Lord. That's why Sammy said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He had a habit of praising God, giving thanks back to God for the blessings that he experienced. My friends, please take it very seriously in your life. What am I going to do with the blessings of God in my life? I was telling somebody yesterday, God has blessed my children uh, many times over than, than he, he, he blessed me in terms of uh, finances and stuff like that. And I'm sure that uh, you look at your parents and, and you look at where you are today. God has blessed you beyond words. But what are you doing with that blessing? Are you helping out in the work of God? Are you, are you becoming a co-laborer with God and with God's people? Praise God. O oh, you who hear prayer, to, to you all flesh will come. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And I say amen to that. Praise God. He hears the prayer. So we were talking about uh, why is not God hearing your prayer. You know, maybe we are not ready for it. Maybe you have a wrong motive in that prayer. Maybe it is not for the, uh, for the glory of God you are asking. There are reasons for it, but the truth remains, God is a prayer hearing God. Amen. Whether he hears my prayer or not, doesn't matter. God is a prayer hearing God. And that's the faith that we need to have in our life. Continue to trust in him. Look at your own life and see if there is any correction that you need to, maybe God is speaking to you. God is calling you to, to, to make some changes in your life. Some adjustments that maybe he's saying, you know, the Bible says, if I had regarded iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard. Very simple. If there is sin in my life, God is not going to hear that prayer. So there are reasons why God is not hearing prayer. God deals with it in circumstances and in unanswered prayers. And, and it is for us to look at our life and see where we are with him. We have more of a burden to live for the, for, for the glory of God than for the regular worldly person. We have been given much and God will demand much from us. Jesus said one time, because I have come, because I have seen, them, made, uh, uh, wrought these miracles, because I have taught them, if I hadn't done any of those things, they had no sin, right? But since I have done, they have seen it, now they have sin. So we have heard the word of God, we have a Bible in our home, and, and, and we, we say we are born again, we are believers, but, but how do we live our life? God is asking us to look at our life and where we are in our relationship with him. Prayer and praise is based on relationship. We need to have a good relationship with the Lord. God hears prayers. God uh, forgives sins. What a tremendous truth that is. God forgives sins. He, he forgave my sins. Has he forgave, forgave your sins? You, ha you have been forgiven. 
So God forgive, iniquities prevail against me, the psalmist says, as for our transgressions, he will provide atonement for them. I said the other day, uh, well, it is here, God does not shrug off the sin. Well, forget it, you know. He doesn't do, he can do that. Because he is a holy and righteous God. He has a law. God's law must be met. He cannot change. He is unchangeable. Whatever he, he, his nature is, he has to be true to that nature. And one of that nature is that sin will be punished. Sin will be punished. I was telling somebody the other day, for every blessing I have in life, for every good thing I enjoy in my life, somewhere, someone has paid a price for it. For my salvation, it was Jesus Christ who paid that price. <coughs> you see, he forgives our sins. And we can rejoice in that and say, Lord, I thank you for forgiving my sins. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And then we read on and say, he who forgives all your sins, your iniquities. Don't look for reasons anywhere else, but come to the scripture and there will be plenty of reasons we can praise God. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sins. Praise be to God. He covers our sins. Number three, God chose us. God chose us. What a blessing it is. I often marvel that he chose me, and he chose me to be a preacher of God's word. It's an amazing thing. When I was in high school, when I was in high school, we, we, we had a system in school, and, and the system was that whoever, whoever ha, has the maximum mark in the class will be made the monitor, monitor, uh, you know, that's one of the Indian, the monitor of the class. So it happened to me, my turn one, one time, and they made me the monitor. But I was the most shy person in the class. What the monitor does is, when the teacher is not in the class, or if he's late or something, he needs to go to the headmaster and say, there is nobody in the class. So, you know, to keep some order. So, one day the teacher didn't come. It was my turn to go to the headmaster and say, there is no teacher in the class. And, and I cannot explain to you the struggle I went went through to tell the headmaster. I went to his office, and he was talking to somebody. I didn't have the nerve to walk in there. I just paced the floor back and forth, back and forth, hoping to get a break that I can tell him. And I was sort of, you know, shaking. It, is, it amazes me how God chose me to preach the word before a congregation. But it is God. God can do amazing thing in your life. He can. I never went to an engineering college. Never had a lesson on engineering. I was the manager of the industrial engineering department of a big company. And people who went to Georgia Tech, I hired them. And they were reporting to me. Never had a course on engineering. My subject was botany. <laughs> Isn't God faithful? God good? It's good. God is good. You who, and, and I'm so talking about God choosing us. God choosing us. And, and those things are nothing compared to the, cho the being chosen by God. To be his child. And that's something that is worth shouting about. God, you chose me. You chose me. You have seen these commercials perhaps uh, where this publishes he clearing house. They come to this door with, uh, with this uh, $7,000 per month for lifetime thing. You know, you see the excitement of those people. Maybe they are acting, I don't know. But you see the excitement, and, and when we say, people, God has chosen us 
to be his children, to inherit the riches of God in heaven, to be with him, we just see like, uh huh. It's something to be praising God for, rejoicing in him. So when you stand before God, you can say, God, I want to thank you for hearing my prayer. I want to praise you, Lord, for you forgave my, my iniquities, my sins, and you keep forgiving me. And I want to praise you, Father, for choosing me of all the people in the world. Of all the people, he has mercy on us, and he chose us to be his children. As many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become the children of God. He chose us. Jesus told the disciples, you did not choose me, choose me, but I chose you. Peter, you have nothing to brag about. John, the disciples, they have nothing to brag about. It was the mercy of Christ that chose them to be his disciples. The, the, in the words of the Apostle Paul, that no flesh should boast. It's God's mercy that you are a child of God. That you can sing a song of praise. That you can thank God. You can pray a prayer. You can have a hope in your heart. It is God's love and mercy because he chose you to be his child. We can praise God because he chose him, chose us. Well, I want to, you know, blessed is the man you choose and causes to approach you. Causes to approach you that he may dwell in your courts. You know, the psalmist just goes a little, little beyond just choosing. And he's saying that, what does that just choosing include? What does it mean? It means that God chose you so you can approach him. He can come close to him. In Hebrews, we read about that we can approach the throne of grace. We have, we have access to the Father through Jesus Christ. And we have no fear. We have, don't have to fear to go to him, praise God. In the Old Testament times, only the high priest once a year could go to the presence of God. And it was a terrible thing. I mean, he had to offer sacrifices, get him cleansed. And, and even then, you know, I, 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 I have learned that when he went in there, there was a rope tied to him. If in case he, if something happens, he dies, nobody else can go in. So they had to pull him out of there. But praise God, he chose us. The veil has been torn. We can go to him directly now. Praise God. Something to praise God for. He removed all the obstacles for you and me to approach the throne of God. In the language of Paul, we can call him Abba, Father. Praise God. What a blessed privilege we have, dear children of God. Rejoice in him. Praise him, you know. And to be in his court. In his court. God's desire for his people is to be in his, in his presence. Living in his presence. He chose us that we may dwell in his courts. Or live in his presence. He chose us uh, that, that, um, uh, that we will bear fruit for him. Remember in John 15, 16 we read, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. So this choosing involves something. We were not uh, uh, chosen to be idle, to be lazy. And, 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 and when I was looking at this passage, I saw that little word in there, which that you should do what? You should go. You should go. And I never caught that, that little word there before. But now I see it there. It is the plan of God that we go. Go. That means action. Do something. Praise God. Laziness is not a mark of a child of God. Work is. Work is we do something. And the Bible says, I chose you to bear Fruit, bear fruit. What kind of fruit are we bearing? Are we bringing glory through our fruit, fruit bearing? Number three. In Ephesians 1, 4, we read, Just as he chose us 
in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. There's a purpose, dear ones. God chose us to be holy. Holy. So when we ex get excited about God being we, we being chosen by God, we also need to remember why he chose us. And be found in the areas that God wants us to be found. He wants us to be holy, without blame, in love. Number four, but you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. An amazing passage of scripture, a holy nation. His own special people. For what? That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us to proclaim. To proclaim his praises. That's the command of God. That's the word of God. But the sad truth is that we don't pay much attention to it. Are we proclaiming his praises? So God chose us for a purpose. Amen. Number four, God gives us hope. Hope. In verse number five, we read in Psalm 65, by awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation, who, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth. Confidence means hope in some translation. So God is the God of hope. Many, many times people lose hope. Lose hope. But God is a God of hope. In Psalm 39, 7 we read, And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. We need to be able to say boldly, God, my hope is in you. Sometimes we place our hope on material things and, and we get discouraged and disappointed. But you put your hope in God, you don't have to be disappointed. When I was meditating about that word hope, this passage of scripture came to mind about, about Peter, Paul being taken to Rome in the, last, uh, in the 27th chapter of the, of the uh, book of Acts. You see, he was taken to Rome and they were in a, in a storm. They were in a storm. The Bible says that they lost all hope because of the storm. All hope. In, in chapter 27... And verse 10 we read, and, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and of the ship, but also of our lives. Now Paul warned them not to take this trip. But they did. They disobeyed the word of the man of God and uh, they, they took that trip. In verse 20, we read, after they've been through the storm for days and days, in verse 20, we read, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. All hope was lost for the people in that ship because they were in a terrible, terrible storm. And you can imagine what kind of feeling that would be? Hopelessness, complete hopelessness. Did you see that in verse 20? All hope was taken away. All hope. There was no hope. Hopeless. Verse 21 we read, 
But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, we should not wage and gained this, this harm and loss. Verse 22, And now I exhort you to, the, uh, to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. Of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that shall that sail with you. See, in, in the middle of a hopeless situation, here is the man of God offering hope to them. And that is parallel with what the Lord said to the disciples who were uh, tempest-tossed in the, in the sea. You remember, Jesus approaches it and he said, be of good cheer. And when I read the passage of Paul here, he says, be of good cheer. And, I, and it was like, uh, you know, learning that uh, we are to be Christ's feet and his voice and his hands in this world. We have the power and the authority to comfort those who are in fear. We can give them hope. We can say, my brother, be of good cheer. This God whom I serve and whose I am, praise God. I know whom I have believed. And he is able to keep that which I have committed to him toward that day. God gives us hope. Are you in a hopeless situation? Don't give up. Because he's the God of hope. Praise God. God of hope. Hope is the anchor of our soul in Hebrews 17, 20. What is the source of our hope? The source of our hope is God. Don't put your hope in anything else or in anybody else. Put it in God. He is the source of our hope. The Bible tells, calls God as a God of hope. In Romans 15, 13, we read, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. You may abound in hope. God is God of hope, my friend. He gives us hope. Even in the most distressful times and periods of life, we have reason to hope because we have God. Praise God. He gives us the source of hope is God. The means of hope is trusting in the word of God. In the word of God. Believing God's word. Because this is our authority. This is our guide. This is the means. That's why we encourage you to read the Bible. Every believer here need to have a copy of a readings plan. So you can read them regularly. Praise God. And that is the 259th time I'm saying that. Because the means of our hope, the means of our faith, the means of everything that are, that is, that are about us is in the word of God. And we cannot have those things but through the word of God. So the, the means of our hope is God's word. Praise God. Judson Taylor, uh, Judson uh, Taylor suffered horrible torture and deprivation in a squalid Burmese prison. A friend sent him a letter and asked, Judson, how is the outlook? And Judson replied, the outlook is as bright as the promises of God. Praise God. We have hope. And the means of hope is the word of God. Judson said, the outlook is as bright as the promises of God. We have something to hope for. Praise God. Why should we praise God? Number five, God is omnipotent. Verse six and seven says, Who established the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power. You who still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves and the tumults of the people. God is sovereign. God is omnipotent. He is a mighty God. I like that song, What a Mighty God We Serve. I love it. 
What a mighty God we serve. In the, in the time of troubles and distresses and fear, what a mighty God we serve. Praise God. Angels bow before him. Praise God. Saints adore him. What a mighty God. So he is almighty, omnipotent in his creative power because he created the mighty mountains. God is supreme over the laws of nature. We know that. He can, he can calm, calm a raging sea. He can still a blowing wind. He is over the nature. In the, in the book of Joshua, we know how God called, when, in answer to Joshua's prayer and, and, and to that battle to finish, God stopped the rotation of the, of the uh, uh, stopped the sun in its track. God is sovereign. Man, he said, stop. How many of you have an Alexa in your home? You know, Joey sent me one and, and I used to play Christian music, nothing else. So when we are going out and say, Alexa, stop. Stop. But look at our mighty heavenly father. He's, he told the universe. What do you call that? The, 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 the whole thing together. There's a word for it. Huh? You know, the, the sun and around it have all this. Huh? Solar system? Okay. He, he, he looked at it and said, stop. Stop! And, and they obeyed his command. Wow. Inanimate thing. Inanimate thing. Has no life. No discernment. But they stopped at the word of God. Praise God. We serve a mighty God. Oh, imagine that. Everything stops. In Colossians, we read that God sustains everything by the word of his power. He sustains everything by the power of his word. Your father is a mighty God. He is omnipotent. He can do everything. Praise God. He told Abraham and, and Sarah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? He told Mary, with God, all things are possible. And we serve a mighty God. And we can trust in him. God is omnipotent. Praise God. We have reason to praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Finally. Finally God provides. God provides. I think we can relate to it uh, much better than some of the other things perhaps, but God provides. The Bible says in uh, uh, Psalm 65 verses 9 and 10, you visit the earth and water it. You, and you greatly enrich it. You, the river of God is full of water. I like that. The river of God is full of, there is no drought in his river. In his river. You provide their grain. God is a provider. My God shall supply all your needs. He is a provider. Praise God. He is a provider. You bless its growth. What a good God we have. He provides and he blesses. He is Jehovah Jireh. And Abraham said, my son God will provide for himself the lamb. You know, Isaac asked, father, here is a wood and here is a fire. But where is the lamb? Little did Isaac knew that he was the lamb. But Abraham, the man of faith, looked at him, his little son, and he said, Son, God will provide. My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together, and Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord, the Lord will provide as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, 
it shall be provided. God provided it in here. God provides. So many other examples in the passage. We know how for 40 years God provided for the, for the children of Israel. God is pro- Are you wondering about your uh, sustenance? Are you wondering about your, how you will do tomorrow? Remember, God provides. Trust in him. Call on him. Praise God. God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. Praise God. So we are concluding, praise God. He hears our prayers. He forgives our sins. He chose us to be his people. He gives us hope. He is omnipotent and he provides many reasons. You and I can praise God for. Praise God. And I hope in the days to come, in the days to come that uh, we will learn to praise God. We will need to open our mouth. Finally, two things. One, we can praise God for who he is. And we can praise God for what he has done. Praise God. Read Psalm 136. It will inspire you out of this world. Praise God. Who, who, he who brought down kings and kingdoms for his people. Who, who opened the way in the Red Sea. Praise God. You read Psalm 136. I don't have time. And in the end we read because he has... Remembered us in our low estate. Praise God. Reasons to praise God. So praise God for who he is. Praise God for what he has done. In your life and in others' life. Remember them. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. And it will surprise you what the Lord has. Many things to praise the Lord for. Praise God. Dale Moody, that great pre- preacher of the word, said, I don't care where it is, what part of the world it is in. If we have a praise church, we will have successful Christianity. Amen? And that's why I want the Bread of Life church to be a praise church. You agree with me? Amen? <laughs> Praise God. We need to be a praise church. Can you imagine what the visitors will think if we start to praise in God? Amen. Praise God. Let everything that has breath. Say it. I'll say the first thing, you say the second thing, all right? Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Was it? About 120 times more voice than, than this one. One more time. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me? Praise God. Amen. We need to practice praising God. And the only way we can praise God is through our mouth and our lips. We have to speak forth. Speak forth the praises of God. And that's how we inspire other people. Bless other people when we praise God. When we thank God. Praise God. Let everything, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. The psalmist is calling us to to, to praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you take a moment even now to to remember some things that he has done for you and, and say thank you and praise God for it. Praise God. Can you remember of the attributes of God, one or two of them? And, and begin to praise God. God, you are so amazing. Hallelujah. You, you are the light, O oh Lord Jesus. You are, the, you, are the, you are the strength of my life, O oh God. Hallelujah. Let's begin to praise God and magnify His holy name. Hallelujah. We've been, we've been redeemed. Let, the, let the, the redeemed of the Lord say so. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. This church, the Bread of Life Church, wants to be a praising church. Hallelujah. Father, every believer here, Lord, bless them to be a praising person, oh God. Remove all the all the laziness, Lord. Remove all the fear, oh God, that we will open our mouth to praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
We will praise you, Lord. We will praise you in good times. We will praise you in bad times. We will praise you in the daytime. We will praise you in the nighttime. We will praise you in the church. We will praise you in the home. We will praise you outside. We will praise you inside. Hallelujah. We want to be a praising people. We want to be a praising people. Hallelujah. Let's sing. Let's sing and praise the Lord. Take time to give praise to the Lord today. Give a praise. Give it. Praise. Amen.